Let me tell you something you already know. I'm Dave Kirloff, languageofhitting.com. Here's a collection of comments uh, regarding hitting and hitting philosophies from the MLB show. I want you to listen carefully to what the broadcaster says, and I'm going to interject some thoughts. The NL Player of the Week is on a tear right now, uptick in power in 2018. What are you seeing from this MVP candidate? Well, you know what, Greg? He has become a hunter. You know, before it was like he was just playing defense with the bat, right? But now, all of a sudden, he's going up to the plate with a plank. First thing I'm going to point out to you is look at that swing. It, it, it just stays in the zone for such a long time. This is what I'm talking about. Look how flat it is to the zone, which really just means slightly upward, right? Look, that's the pitch line. The green is the pitch line. Look at his swing. Look how big that bat is in the green line, the trajectory of the pitch. It's a very long time. This is a common principle that most hitting coaches, baseball and softball coaches know that we want to teach our hitters to keep the bat longer in the zone. Keep the barrel of the bat longer in the strike zone. You can try all the double T work, swing against the fence work, all these drill work to keep the bat longer in the zone. I've tried them all myself. I'm telling you the complete truth. You don't want to miss out. The drills that I have inside the, the video series, the best hitting drill ever, accomplishes this, and you don't need to even think or try to keep your bat longer in the hitting zone. The best hitting drill ever is not your conservative approach to, to teaching the hitter how to keep the bat longer in the zone. It's just the most effective way to get it done and to see the results happen in the game. And then all of a sudden, because you have a type of swing, your misses are going to be better, Jim. So say he's slightly late. Well, guess what? He's still able to hit that ball in a good trajectory for a single. So this is what he used to do, right? He had fastball in, slightly late, single to left field. Here you go, fastball in, slightly late, single to left field, because he's moving the ball forward at a great trajectory. But he's kind of playing defense slightly right here. You know, why would you try to go the other way with these pitches when you should, you know, he's slightly late. You got to give yourself a little bit more time to hit. You know, he's slightly late. You got to give yourself a little bit more time to hit. You know, he's slightly late. You got to give yourself a little bit more time to hit. I really applaud Carlos Pena. He's one of the few guys in this industry of hitting, or talk about hitting, that bring up the topic of timing. The timing affects everything else down the line. The timing affects your swing technique, your swing plane, your swing mechanics. And this comment of giving yourself more time to hit, what's that result back into? It results into a smoother swing, easy, less stressful, not as, as, as exertive. But the bigger question is, what is the recipe? What is the formula? that is inside of improving your timing. But now, what? He's becoming a gladiator, Jim. Now what, were you, were you doing life echoes in eternity? And now he's going block on down pitches. Then before, he's going the other way, just kind of like serving them off. You know what, he gets ready to hit, gets the pitch a middle in, and he's not even straining to get the barrel to the baseball. You know what, he gets ready to hit, gets the pitch a middle in, and he's not even straining to get the barrel to the baseball. And he's not even straining to get the barrel to the baseball. There you go. He's not even straining to get his barrel to the baseball. So logically, you ask yourself the question, why isn't he straining to get himself to the baseball? And the answer Carlos Pena is sharing with the audience, I, not, I also share with you, is this. He's changed his timing. And having studied timing for like the last 26 years, I've learned that there's different layers to timing. There's the sub-layer to timing where you see how the, the batter is timing his own body, his, his, his in harmony with himself. And this involves the hitter's hitting model, and it also involves the hitter's hitting tempo. What is his natural athletic disposition should it and will infect his hitting tempo? The next sub-layer to timing is understanding how the hitter is going to correspond himself with the pitcher's positioning or the pitcher's body. Meaning how and when the pitcher gets into a position, how is the batter going to counter with his positioning. And this is where the pitcher's common denominator 
is is a valuable necessity and tool for the hitter to use. And now the deeper sublayer is the timing of the vision and the timing of the brain. It's the timing of the brain, the timing of your thoughts, and the timing of your vision that is really the driving motor for all the, the layers that are above it when we talk about hitting and discussing the topic of timing. Look at this right here. Loads, nice and smooth, great control. This was an absolute rocket. It was like a two iron, it just kept them rising. Pitches inside, it looks like he knows they're coming. But in reality, all that matters is the fact that he's given himself enough time to get his A swing on the baseball. None of these home runs look like he's actually forcing it or trying harder. But in reality, all that matters is the fact that he's given himself enough time to get his A swing on the baseball. None of these home runs look like he's actually forcing it or trying harder. None of these home runs look like he's actually forcing it or trying harder. But he's on time, Jim, and the plot are just coming and coming. Look at, look at these numbers. This guy is MVP for me in the National He's the best player in the I mean, National League in the Serie A. So what's really going on? What did Christian Yelich change from last year to this year? Some of the more obvious things that he's changed is inside of his, his hitting model and his hitting tempo. If you watch very carefully, his arrangement of his hitting model, he's added something. He's added a hitting additive or a hitting supplement. He's added a compression to his hitting stance, a compression to his hitting model. Next, what really stands out to me is he's changed his hitting tempo. He's gone from a fast medium hitting tempo to now a slow medium hitting tempo. And now, to be even more precise, he's arranged his hitting model and his range is hitting tempo to fit the pitcher's common denominator. And now into the deeper sublayers to timing. I believe because he's changed, he's, he's added this, this compression part of his hitting model and he's changed his hitting tempo, it ultimately affects what I call his timed perception. He has improved his timed perception for the ball. And a batter's time perception is driven by the timing of the hitter's brain and the timing of the hitter's vision. Let's help our kids to be as good as they can be while they're still young. I'm Dave Kirloff, languageofhitting.com, and Lord bless you.